Along with one of my trainees, we recently published a review looking at the evolution of immunotherapy strategies in breast cancer over the last number of years, where obviously there's been a lot of active clinical and preclinical development that has resulted in the approved therapies that we now have, uh, which in include um, the combinations of the pembrolizumab or atezolizumab with chemotherapy for advanced disease or um, chemotherapy and pembrolizumab as neoadjuvant and adjuvant therapy for early breast cancer. There's, of course, a tremendous amount of ongoing investigation looking at how these strategies may be improved or expanded into other areas of breast cancer research. Um, one aspect of this, which I think is particularly interesting, is uh, to try and understand who specifically are the individuals or what are, what are the features of the individuals who may benefit most from immunotherapy. We have PDL1 obviously as a biomarker that's used for advanced disease, uh, but um, there may be other features which could allow us to better refine that population and indeed perhaps identify a group of patients who don't need the chemotherapy as part of uh, a treatment strategy for advanced disease. And you know, going back to the quality of life data that we talked about from Keynote 355, many of the symptom scales that were reported by patients where there was uh, evidence of um, symptoms emerging with treatment are related to those toxicities that we know are attributable to chemotherapy, things like nausea and hair loss, for example.